What's going on? We're uh, having a stroll. Our evening stroll. What's the latest from Bombay? We're here. We are in Bombay. And uh, things are turning. Things are what? Churning. Churning? Churning. Yeah. Churning indeed. Do you have any um, kind of thoughts on 2024? For the Biennale? Yeah. For Bombay? For Bom yeah, Bombay and the Biennale. Um, I mean, yeah, I have many thoughts. Any of them that you would care to make public? Where is this? This is going on your pier. Okay. I don't know until yeah. after I make it if something is going anywhere. Well, I think from a from an organizational standpoint, we're early, which is really great. Um, I think that there's a lot to be improved upon, and I think there's time to actually implement those things. There's foresight, my favorite thing. Uh, and let's talk big picture a little. Okay. What do you think about, um, for, first of all, what's, what's special about this place? Why did you decide to, uh, dedicate your immense skills and creativity and thought and organizational and creative visions to this of all places? Well, it's certainly unlike any other place in the world. And that is reason enough to engage. I think that it's still, it is a little bit undefined in many ways, or its boundaries are undefined. And it's in a process of const reconstituting itself. And that's a really juicy place to take part in an experiment because nothing has been solidified. We're like still in the oven, you know? <laughs> uh, it's not baked yet. And so as an artist, as, as someone interested in building um, efficient and caring and loving and adaptable systems, that's a really cool and sometimes deeply infuriating <laughs> context to work inside of. But often, you know, you're just plugging into someone else's institution and changing things once they're baked is damn near impossible. Yeah. And so to be able to take part in something that's still in the oven um, is really fascinating. And it bends and stretches the mind in a way that other things can't. Um, I think one of my favorite things about Bombay Beach is the way it embody it embodies a lot of contradictions. Mm -hmm. And one thing it's so funny because it's like one of the most boundary defined places I've ever been because it's a literal square and the entire town exists inside this square and this grid of these lines. And yet yeah, it's the least boundary defined in terms of traditional boundaries. Um, as far as in the United States, it's the least policed place I've ever seen. Um, and it's the most, also there's this contradiction of it feeling, you know, it's known for being unhealthy in a way because of the, the, the dust and the sea that has its issues. And yet it feels the most natural in the sense that we're least kind of, um, dominated by societal forces and then at the same time societal forces have done wreaked utter havoc on this place and everything has gone wrong 
and you can see that by just looking at these ruins like obviously this was not what was intended here and that's also what makes it an incredible blank canvas like everything in its opposite is true here which is a really interesting place to 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 dwell in this liminal space i think and here we are on this on this little edge, this absurd berm, which was meant to keep the sea out. And now it keeps the floods in when it rains. I like the berm. I like the berm too, except that it like blocks our view I of like the sea. That. I don't know why, I like that. <laughs> it feels Very like you're it. contained, like you're contained by it. Yeah, totally. This was built in the uh, 1970s. The sea came up to here. And then every time they would like overfill it, it would flood the whole um, Western part of the town here. So rather than evacuate as people were encouraged to do, they built this berm with the help of the Army Corps of Engineers, I think. And um, so all the houses that were on this side were decommissioned. And what did you leave? I thought I saw you holding a pen. Did I drop it? God damn it. I was just removing pen. Do you have a pen? I don't. I need a pen. This is my pen. I need a pen. <laughs> what do you need it for? Oh, to draw during the sunset? Write things, things down. You want to go back? We have some time before the sunset and we can just make this a longer conversation. We can make this a podcast. <laughs> you wanna go back? Okay, we'll just continue talking because I also wanna give a little tour of some of the art like the Tesseract and the lighthouse. The light is amazing right now. Yeah, let's go back. We're gonna go back for a pen and then we're gonna go to the pier. Do you have pens anywhere? No. Come on, you must. I don't. I mustn't. You don't have a pen anywhere? I just love the look. It's the first time a phone actually has a, a satisfying cinematic look to me. And it's, it's amazing how much it's inspired me to create these uh, longer form videos. <laughs> what are you smirking about? No. Tell me. No, say it. Speak your mind. Um, no, I like my head. <laughs> Speak your mind. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what I was thinking, really. Just smirking away? Smirking away. <laughs> smirking away. I don't know, I also think every time I come here, it's just an opportunity to, it feels like a residency, mm -hmm. you know, you come to this like weird place for a while and you can, you have this opportunity to, there it is. <laughs> Let that be a metaphor. You have this opportunity to kind of create a set of goals for yourself or... Wait, take off your hat for a little bit because I can only see hair and hat. <laughs> I am only hair and hat. Um, it's part of my look. Part of my dune look. <laughs> I also think... I'm your stylist. Being here is kind of like being in a constant derive. A constant what? Derive. What's a derive? I've never heard that word. Really? Oh my god. I can't well, believe derive that new word. Was uh, this experiment offered by Guy Debord uh, when he was writing about the confines of urban environments and how this, like, this notion of psychogeography is like. We, when you're in a city, you're often following these scripts and these paths that, um, you know, weren't defined by you and kind of keep you in this, like, mechanistic way of being. And so the dreave is this tool and this exercise to get out of 
those predetermined pathways and you basically you choose like an event or a neighborhood and just sort of follow your whimsy and engage with the city in this different way it's a way to dislodge your normal routines and being in nice. Bombay is kind of a, a constant derive you're just going with the flow there is no way really to interact with the city the city the town the village there's no set way to be here you kind of have to just follow your whimsy and there's always something to do in that way like i'm gonna go to the pier and sort of tiki thing or i'm gonna go out on the water or i'm gonna go to tea or i'm gonna go to the ski like you're just kind of you know what i love is that some of it i very paradoxically reminds me of being in an like old italian town totally but it's the farthest that you could possibly be from that in the sense that the old italian town has history and it's fixed in an amazing way like like it's not going to change and you're not going to change it and that's the beauty of it but there's these traditions of like you know the boys going out on their scooters and going to the bar and having a drink and some of the things that just like kind of public civic life that just are are so markedly absent from most american like urban and suburban existences and yet we get to change this and participate and witness this evolution that's like so fast and so marked and so unusual like um you know these sculptures that are growing here by sean guerrero like that's a giant fish a dead fish and i love some of these sculptures remind me of like samuel beckett I always think of Beckett every time I walk by these because like that like look at this kind of like absurdity and this kind of humor and this tragedy at the same time like this scarecrowish man with this you know kind of st sticks coming out of the head and this guy kind of hanging there looking like you know an execution a public execution and then you have, you know, the abandoned water park, which never actually was. And the Barco de la Muerte, the boat of death, which is, was inspired by Werner Herzog, um, also by Sean Guerrero. And there's a political art piece that just appeared. Pardon our dust, we are shrinking the sea to profit IID. IID is Imperial Valley irrigation district that owns a lot of this land and then here's another one of these beckett style sculptures hi this is another bleak sculpture that i love <laughs> Look at it, look at this face. Hold on, I'm gonna walk up to it real quick. It's just so, I feel like it's like an, 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 a young organism being born out of this primordial soup that is the Salton Sea. And look at this one. And every day you're gonna come out and see something different. And that's extremely inspiring for a creative person. And, and when I started coming here, the sea was up to here. It was, the water was splashing here. You could see where the boats used to go in. It's 
see what's happening over here. What are you guys working on? Just looking. Oh, you're just looking. <laughs> you look like you're about to build or plan something. Wow, well, you see old doors like this, and you want, you want, then you think about it. But these doors are hard to find. Club 86. You're in Bombay. Do you live here in Bombay? Oh no. Are you no, just visiting? We're, we're, we're at uh, about to use Foy. Oh, okay, just down the road. Yeah, we're down the road. Do you have any thoughts or questions? For you? Yeah. Or just in, in general. What are you thinking about this season? What's that? What are you thinking about this season? Well, I, I always have a lot of excitement for the unknown. I, have, uh, I, I, I think of all of us who are involved in this, I'm the most, um, I have the most faith in the positive outcome of the unknown and the uncontrolled. Um, and I also have a group, deep appreciation for the people like you who, uh, are more deliberate. Excuse me. More deliberate than I am. Um, for me, I I have a sense of I, I approach this with a sense of optimism, wonder, and uh, improvisation, and inviting of what I hope is just the the right um, energy is such an overused boring word but I can't think of a better one right now but energy in the form of personalities and of creative people um, and the, the, the one I'm most pleased with is in front of me right now. <laughs> Walking with her notebook. <laughs> and what she brings to Bombay Beach is invaluable. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very grateful and excited for how you have helped coalesce. Um, what were, I think, very almost too disparate and too unorganized mm -hmm. <laughs> visions. Mm -hmm. T-O-O. Um, so I, I, I'm excited about documenting. Indeed. I'm excited Indeed. about... I, 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 I'm, I've, been, I've been feeling my documentary instincts return after a several year hiatus and and oh, it's taking the form of the film that we're making together which is always on my mind do you feel like it is this relationship with social media that's i know it's like you have a camera that you like in the eye but i feel like it works what worked like you changing your relationship to social media has redirected. Oh, well, absolutely. Your impulse and meditation. And I think meditation. I, I wonder about that because yeah, it's hard to tell meditation. Like, what does it actually do? Like Sorry. most of the time, I'm sitting there thinking, like, what the fuck? Like, is this doing anything? I'm just sitting here. But I feel like doing it twice a day. Like when I set out like the intention what was intention behind the meditation practice and it was like to be more focused and more creative on things that 
that have like more depth um and 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 you know maybe it's working maybe i don't know so for me the most exciting thing is the move into the water because for 10 years there was no contact with the water it just looked like this kind of gross uh, you know almost like a sump and and now this year for the first time in the history of Bombay what's up I see you too look at this well it's still early there usually people come up right at sunset You know what I love? What? The Bombay Beach aesthetic as it is embodied in this ice cream sign. Um, as it is embodied in this truck with no front windshield. In Damon's van. in this the little scooter my um my dream is that we are accidentally on purpose developing the style of a movement instead of the style of an individual of course so that's always been more interesting historically when you have you know whether it was the factory and Warhol, you know, it, there was certain key individuals or Bauhaus. Um, and I, I think that that's, we're discovering that still. And it's partly determined by the place and the era. And, and it's partly determined by a, 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 what's up? This is one of our great artists. I'm documenting just the whole scene here in a longer video today. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired this pier? Sean put it together, <laughs> and then I just threw it out there. But you have it. You're an artist. Like you did the trees over there. That was so people to stop getting stuck behind me. How are they getting stuck? Drive right past me and get stuck. Do you have any thoughts on Bombay Beach for 2024? What you would like to see happen here? I would like to see more people get in the water. Yes. Um, what else would I like? I don't know. I just love it here. And, you know, I want it to, I want more people to love it, but not too many people. We yeah. don't want too many people here. That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the, the exactly. ultimate trick. I, I don't know how we, how, how we keep only the right people coming yes. here. Yes, exactly. This is my favorite graffiti here. No gods, no masters. As an anarchist, yeah, I, I really, that. yeah, on this jet ski, <laughs> the jet ski is a symbol often of like just excess. Really? Yeah. Who is it? I don't know. I guess. Is that one of the no. So he started like on the whole. How uh, how long is it taking him? I'm not sure. Like there he is. Oh, you just started? No. Damon, today I'm making a longer video. I'm 25 minutes in already. Um, uh, just kind of documenting 2024. Do you have any visions for the for Bombay Beach for this year? Water. More things on the water. More things on and in the water, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, more things. I got an idea. RJ, I'm 25 <laughs> minutes into a longer video uh, documentation for like 2024 uh, early finale season. Do you have any thoughts? I'm, uh, I'm with I'm with Damon and you. I think we should do Drowning Man. You know, drowning Man. Soaking Man or something. <laughs> I mean, all, all I've wanted was to build a Wicker Man here, but I can't do that because it'll just turn into Burning Man. So. Maybe he's just drowning though. Yeah. 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 Soaking, yeah. drowning man, <laughs> <laughs> woman, yes. non-binary person. Uh, that would be good. In a, in a, in a, in a,
<laughs> no, it's two in Mission Impossible. We mentioned it's a lot of dialectical <laughs> relations. Yes. Agreed. We, Agreed. Need, we need to drown nor burn no men nor women. <laughs> Do you have any any thoughts, dreams, desires, visions for Bombay Beach in 2024? Oh my God, bigger and better than ever. Um, I'm thinking maybe like a cast iron bathtub swing. I think that would be pretty cool. So might start getting to work on that. But uh, I also made some sausage rolls here if anybody's interested. What, how long have you been in Bombay? Um, I've been coming out here for about four or five years now. Um, this last Biennale was my first Biennale though, and it was like a life-changing experience. And um, I moved out here in September, so I've just been soaking it all up and getting to know everyone, enjoying everything, and I guess waiting to see what's coming. What made it life-changing? Just my, I guess getting to meet all these different people from all around the world with different ideas and different thoughts, and um, just I don't know. It's just opened up my my mind to so many different ideas and ways of thinking and different people and their you know the way they interact with each other and it's just really interesting and we've got a really like tight-knit group of very diverse and different people here in Bombay and it's really just incredible where were you before this New Hampshire originally I was born in England uh, I moved here when I was about seven and uh, been in New Hampshire pretty much ever since then and now you're living in Bombay now I'm living in Bombay Do you have a house here I'm renting, but I own a piece of the land down on the beach over here. Oh, right on. Yep. I think this yep. guy. Happy New Year! 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 Happy New Wait, quiet, everyone. You're going, you're circumnavigating the sea? How, are you trying to do it before dark? No. <laughs> no, he's been at it. sleeping on the boat? Oh, no way. Oh, so you're going to camp on the beach? Yeah, I would just park somewhere and get off. Well, found the perfect place. Is this your, have you been to Bombay Beach before? How how many how much of it have you done already? Well, it's about I've done over 50 miles. Wow! Wow! You're like halfway there. Yeah! Wow! You have other sections. So do you have all your supplies with you when you go off at night? You just camp somewhere? Yeah, just camp yeah. along along the shore. Where's your car at? Like. Well, I, I had some friends bring them over. I got my truck here. Oh, wow. oh right on. Yeah, I'm going to do the, the, the last part later. Okay. My wife is waiting for me. What's your name? Chico. Chico? Chico. Chico. How do you spell it? Chico. S-I-C-C-O. S-I-C-C-O. Cool. Nice to meet you. -C -C Very cool. We're just all saying how our biggest dream for the next year is more in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How is the water? Have you swum in it? I have not yet. No. Are you thinking you might? Wet. Yeah. <laughs> I got plenty of salt water in my camera and everything. <laughs> it's so beautiful right now. It's got you got a choppy day today. Yeah, it was a headwind the last three days. <laughs> Have you found anything interesting popping out of the water? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Feel free to park that thing anywhere on the beach. You can't out if you'd like. <laughs> That's all that's out here is to keep people to camp out. What happened to your head, Raymond? You're bleeding. Oh, man. I smacked it on a, on a cabinet coming out the door of my motor <laughs> Oh, I smacked no. my head on a cabinet today too, but it just gave me a little bump. <laughs> Every time I hit that fucking thing, man, I go out the door, I smack my head on it. Did you get, did, have you gotten like pictures of the Snuggie game? You know, there's like six of us running around. I love these things. <laughs> Raymond, how long have you lived in Bombay? Shoot, about 45 years. You've been here 45 years? Wow. Been here since 1988. And, and how, can you tell me how it's changed? 
Oh, it's changed for the better now. It was going, it was going towards the bad side, and then everybody started buying property, putting things out here for people to see, and bringing, bringing a lot of people out. So, you've you lived know. here full time for forty-five years. Yep. I didn't realize you've been here that long. Yeah, I came out here in nineteen eighty-eight to what brought remodel. You here? I came out here to help a friend remodel a double wide trailer uh -huh. in nineteen eighty-eight, and I've yet to leave. Amazing. How old are you? 62. I'll be 63 in June. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Raymond. Hi. Okay, well, checking out. This was a great little 30 minute chat. I didn't realize Raymond had been here since 1988, full time. Oh, this is soaking wet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been sitting that. in that for a while. <laughs> That's quite a lens. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think hers is picture. bigger. <laughs> is that a lens in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Maybe both. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, the cannonball run. Oh, no, I was the cannonball run. Lux, what for? <laughs> well, what you want? What's up, brother? Well, Amanda's gone, so all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> closing words. Time to party? Huh? Any closing words for today? Yeah, it's time to party I'm at Danny's house. There's no old lady. All right. I've waited at least till before she's home. You know. <laughs> <laughs>